In this video, we are going to demonstrate 3D scanning and CAD modeling a lawnmower blade. Now, lawnmower blades can look pretty easy, but in fact, they can be quite complex in shape. They have a lot of flat areas, but then they have a lot of very contoured or very complex shaped areas. Now, the reason we want to do this is because there is no CAD data uh, for this blade. And for a manufacturer to create either create new tooling or replacement tooling, um, traditionally, uh, this was all done by hand. Uh, so what we're going to do is 3D scan it and create a CAD model. Not only does that then allow us to generate a CNC tool, tool path to machine a tool, but we can generate drawings. We can also do analysis such as uh, CFD for like airflow or FEA analysis for like structural uh, capabilities. So uh, there's a big advantage to having a 3D CAD model, but traditionally measuring and trying to design these uh, by hand is quite cumbersome. So for this video, we are going to use the Creaform GoScan 50. Now the GoScan comes in a Model 20 and a Model 50. And we have other demos that go into a lot of detail on that scanner and all the specifics. Uh, for this video, we're really going to show just the whole process, uh, uh, not only 3D scanning, but then uh, CAD modeling. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual scanning. Okay, so to use the uh, GoScan 3D scanner, it's, it's pretty easy scanner to use. As you can see here, it's very portable. It's handheld. Uh, basically, it's a USB cable that plugs into a laptop, and it's pretty much point and shoot and just move around. Um, now, this is a structured light scanner. It uses an LED light. It's, it uh, projects out a pattern. Um, it can work with targets or no targets. Now, in this application, we're using targets not only the, on this targeted pad underneath, but some targets on this, the blade itself. And you'll see uh, why in a minute. Targets help to hold the accuracy tighter. Um, you can scan faster just because uh, the scanner can position itself faster with targets. They're not always required, but in this case, it's a good use to have the targets. So you simply move around. It's like digital spray painting. We're just trying to cover the whole area and make sure we collect all the data. Uh, we can stop and look at the data at any time. So here we are scanning it again, just zoomed in this time. You can kind of see the pattern on the blade. It projects it out, and then the cameras pick up the 3D shape. So it's very fast, um, but like all scanners, it's line of sight. So we're actually going to have to set this up twice to get uh, both sides of the blade. Um, and you'll see why we're going to use the target. So now we're going to flip the blade over, okay, as you see here. Now, the only problem with doing this is now the relationship between the targets on the pad and the targets on the blade has now changed. And since the targets are merely for positioning, uh, the scanner would get confused. So we're going into the uh, VX Elements software that comes with it. First thing we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and delete all the scan data we don't need because the scanner obviously picked up the uh, targeted table and the vise. Uh, so we're just going to kind of window in and get this uh, fairly close. We don't have to be perfect with this, but we'll just window this area in and we'll tell the software to delete it. Now, again, because the relationship between the targets on the blade and the pad have changed, we're also going to want to delete those targets. So we've got a little bit of data here we'll just get uh, rid of. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and display the targets. Because just like the scan data, we can selectively delete some of the targets. Now, the key to doing it this way is we're not going to delete the targets that are on the blade itself. That way, the scanner, when we go to scan again, will recognize those uh, six or seven targets, and it'll auto-align itself. Uh, this will make sense in a minute. So all the targets on the pad will get rid of. And again, targets are just for positioning. They have nothing to do with accuracy or, or you know, the data quality. Um, it's merely so the scanner knows where it is in space. Okay, So you can see we still have those targets uh, on the blade. So by having at least three of them on the blade, now when we go to scan again, it'll auto-recognize those targets on the blade. And now we'll move down and scan the rest of the blade while picking up the targets again on the uh, table, on the targeted table. So it's a great way 
to uh, be able to scan because you're, there's no way to get from the front of the blade to the b back of the blade without the target map. Um, it's just too thin. The scanner can't go from one side to the other without getting lost. So that's one of the real advantages of targets. Uh, and on a thin part, you don't want to try to scan one side and the other and then try to align them. There's just not enough data. So this is a very fast way to scan um, the whole part um, you know, very, very quickly. And once we get done here, we'll delete that data we don't need again. And then we're ready for the uh, reverse engineering process. So here's our scan data. It literally took less than five minutes to create that data. And then the next step is going to be to take the scan data and we're going to go into Geomagic for SolidWorks and we're going to do the reverse engineering and create the CAD there. Now there's a few different reverse engineering tools you can use. Um, this one's a good fit for an application like this um, because basically you have uh, a, a full-blown uh, SolidWorks uh, software, CAD software, with a plugin that allows you to work with scan data because SolidWorks uh, by itself uh, just really can't work with scan data. So I'm going to turn it over to one of our application engineers, Chris, and he is going to demonstrate how to take this scan data and build CAD data in Geomagic for SolidWorks. Hi, everyone. This is Chris Rydeen with EMS, and today we're going to be demonstrating Geomagic for SolidWorks. It is a plugin for SolidWorks that allows you to reverse engineer from scan data. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out regions, which are just basic entities like planes or spheres or cones that I use to do my alignment. So you can see here I'm pulling in a plane out here, a plane from this scan data, plane from the top, and then I'm going to create an average plane between those two, and I'm going to use these planes to do an alignment, to bring my scan data into a global coordinate system. Now I'm using the cross-section tool to pull a cross-section uh, on that plane from my scan data that I can sketch right on top of. So I can make sure that this is very, very accurate to the scan data. I can add my measurements and constraints just like you would on any other sketch inside of SolidWorks. And then I extrude that out into 3D space. I can create a vector, a custom vector, right from the scan data. There we go, match that up. Perfect. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do kind of the same thing for each different profile area. Take a cross section and sketch right on top of that cross section. Add one more line there. And then I use the trim tool to create a closed profile. Add my constraints. And then add my thickness. Here we go. And then we'll add a fillet and we can actually see the diameter of the fillet right on top of the profile. So I know that my fillet's gonna fit exactly. And then we'll create a loft here. I'm going to create these guide curves in case we need them. We'll do one more. And here's our loft. And we didn't end up needing those guide curves, but okay. And we move on to the next profile and repeat the same steps. Create a line here, line on the bottom. There's a very, very slight curve. So I'm gonna put two separate lines, a vertical line out there. And I'm gonna drag the vertical line on the right-hand side uh, much further out because uh, we're gonna add that cut later on. And again, add all my constraints. Save my work just in case. And then do another loft. 
And now we get to this complicated uh, transition here. So again, create the exact same sketch as before. Vertical line out there. Close it all up. Here we go. And then we'll add our fillet on both sides. Perfect. And now we're going to go into 3D sketch mode and I'm going to create a 3D spline to connect these two profiles. And I'm going to kind of move it around so I know that it's going to fit on my scan data as closely as possible. Here we go. Make a couple more tweaks and adjustments to make sure that it looks really good. Add my other guide curves. And then we create the, the loft. And then add my guide curves in. Here we go. And now we have a sweep for that complicated transition. And then extend that profile out at the end. And we have our basic shape. The next thing I want to do is I want to add that little uh, cutout for where the uh, blade was sharpened. So we'll go ahead and start pulling a surface loft from that front surface. And again, we're going to speed up time here. So we create several cross sections like we did before, but instead of creating closed profiles, we are just going to create single lines that we are going to do a surface loft together. So add a line there. Same thing on this profile. Create a cross section, add a line right on top. Profile over here, add a line on top. And we'll do one more at the very end. There we go. Now I'm just gonna create a surface loft on all three of these. And I extend that surface out and I use it as a trim tool to trim away that surface. Here we go. And I'll cut this back, make a couple tweaks to make sure that it looks perfect. Pull that a little bit more, much better. Okay, so now we're going to take the right half and we're gonna translate it over to the left half and we're gonna merge the two halves together. And we'll mate by those surfaces. We pick the surfaces that we wanna to mate to. And we'll make these two points coincident. There we go. Now I'm going to import the uh, standard tool for the center cut. It's a file that I already had uh, standard. I am then going to take these faces and we're going to align it to my part that I just made. And I'm going to use this as a cutting tool. So we just align up to match those planes. I'll move it into position. That looks good. And then we can rotate it so it matches the scan data. Perfect. Now we'll use the cutting tool. Here we go. 
So now we've got our final part and we can use the color mapping that allows us to see the deviation between the part that we made and the part that we had scanned. And we can use this color map data to update, to make changes if we need to, uh, add more shape or geometry. Uh, it's totally up to you. Again, this was Chris Rydeen with EMS. Uh, thank you very much for watching.